Welcome to the RC Adventure Channel, everybody. This is part four of the Airplane Scratch Building Series. Focus of this part's gonna be all on building the tail feathers. Now, I know what you're thinking, geez, another boring indoor video. You know, where, where's the outdoor stuff? Where's the excitement, the adventure you promised? Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Uh, yeah, the last couple of weeks have been nothing but ground blizzards and quarantines for my family. So, you know, just patience. Uh, and we'll be back outside having fun soon enough. In the meantime, though, I've got some exciting news for you. Uh, the RC Adventure Channel is now on Facebook, so you can head on over there, check us out. There's gonna be all kinds of fun stuff on that page. But before you do that, uh, hey, let's get building. Before I can start building the tail, I need to change the size on it slightly. If you remember in the first video, I said that I was gonna lengthen the nose to fix the CG issue that some of the earlier airplanes had. When you lengthen the nose, that changes the center of lateral area, or CLA for short. To help demonstrate what CLA is and how it affects the airplane, I've got my HER Engineering Aquastar here. In a nutshell, it's every vertical surface. Uh, so the side of the fuselage, your vertical tail, even small things like the wingtip floats, wingtips, uh, the engine nacelle and pylon, all of those count. It's important because it directly impacts the aircraft's yaw stability. Say you're flying along, you're going a little bit sideways, you're doing a knife edge or forward slip to a landing, something like that, and you've got all this pressure, wind, you know, acting on the side of the airplane, and you've lengthened the nose, now you've got too much pressure on the front. Well, you're gonna wind up with a very yaw unstable airplane, and it's gonna easily yaw too far, could even tumble out of control on you in extreme cases. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, if you had too much pressure on the tail, you would have a very yaw-stable airplane, which is good for a trainer, but not necessarily good for an aerobatic airplane. And in more extreme cases, you may not even have enough rudder authority just for regular flying. So how do we figure out where the CLA is and make sure that it's in the right spot? <laughs> well, we do a little bit of cardboard engineering, that's how. Make a little cardboard profile of your airplane. Preferably make one full size, bigger is gonna be more precise. I didn't have any cardboard that big, so I just went with a little, little one like this. Uh, this should be good enough. When you make your cardboard profile, just take an educated guess on the side of the tail and then go a little bit oversized because you can always remove material. It's hard to add material. Everywhere you have two vertical surfaces, such as uh, in my case, the engine nacelle and pylon, you're gonna to wanna to double it up. But say you had two vertical tails, you would double that area up as well. Same goes for maybe things like landing gear, uh, depends on your airplane. Left and right side does not count as two vertical surfaces, so your fuselage is just one piece. Uh, same thing with the tail in my case, since there's only one tail. You're also gonna to wanna to account for things like your wing. Uh, so you, you would make kind of a profile of the wing as an extra double piece on here using the bottom of the wing root and the top of the wing tip as one piece. Uh, and then I've kind of done the same with the horizontal tail back here. I probably should put the wing tip floats on there, but uh, you know, they're, they're pretty close to uh, that, that center, so I, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Next thing you're gonna wanna do, take a pin, a string, and some weight and pick two spots on the profile that are pretty far apart. It can be anywhere really. I've got one up near the top. And then pin the whole thing to the wall so that it can move freely. Once it stops swinging, mark where that string is hanging, make a line. Take the pin out, put it in the second spot. Where those two lines cross, is the center of lateral area of this design. You want it to be at about 25% of the tail moment arm, which is measured from the CG to the center of the vertical tail. And that usually puts it right about the trailing edge of the wing, which is right where these two cross. Now, uh, one other quick tip here for you. Uh, if your significant other does not like the idea of you sticking pins in the wall, just remind them it's part of the hobby and that the hobby is for the kids. It's part of their education because, you know, we're all homeschooling. A lot of us are still stuck at home on quarantines and stuff. So this is hobby thing. This is the education for the kids. If nothing else, just don't tell my wife I stuck pins in the wall. <laughs> Let's get back to building. Building the vertical stab is pretty easy. The ribs are made as left and right sides. You just pin the left side ribs in place where it's shown on the plans. 
Then you put in the left side spar cap and then the sheeting. You can take it off, flip it over, put the right side ribs in place, followed by the right side spar cap. And then you're going to want to make sure you put in the guide tube for the elevator push rod because once this is all sheeted over, which is the next step, this is going to be inaccessible. So do that while you can get to it. Now there were a couple of things in the design that I decided to change. The vertical stab spar location uh, didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So I changed it slightly and now it's connected to former F9 at the bottom and the horizontal stab spar at the top. So that should make for a much stronger tail section. I also went ahead and added in shear webbing in between the spars. So that's also increased the strength of the vertical stab by quite a bit. One other little tweak too was to go slightly thinner balsa on the ribs. This is uh, 330 seconds. I was just working with what I had. The plans call for 8th inch, but 330 seconds will be fine. 16th inch should work just fine too if you had that. Just like that, the other side is sheeted. I built the ventral fin up front here, just using 16th inch balsa sheet on the side, some 330 seconds balsa sheet across the bottom, and a quarter inch stick across the top. And that's what the vertical stabilizer looks like installed. I didn't film the installation, not really a whole lot to it. The quarter inch square stick that makes up the leading edge is secured to the keel down here. The spar in the middle that I was talking about earlier is glued to former F9 using the super glue and baking soda trick. And then back here in the tail, the quarter by half inch piece that's kind of in between everything goes down in between the fuselage sides and is secured right here. Two most important things to keep in mind with this is that it needs to be perfectly vertical and perfectly parallel to the aircraft centerline. Well, the next thing to do is get going on the horizontal stab and elevator. Now that I got the horizontal stab and elevator built up, I need to hinge the two together. Part of that involves finding the center of this rear spar, which can be a bit of a chore, but there's a tool you can make to make this super easy. It's this little guy right here. This is a three inch long by half inch scrap of hardwood I had sitting around with three holes drilled in it. Each hole is about an inch apart. The middle hole is, uh, I think I started with 16th inch and then expanded it until my pencil fit in the middle. And then these outer ones are quarter inch holes. And you use it by taking the pencil, putting it in, and it should be just barely poking out the other side. Then you take the part that you want to find the center on, and you put it on, and you turn the tool until the pins are resting against the, the part on both sides. And then you can just go along like so. And there you go. There's a line right down the middle. Now, there's two ways you can cut the slats for the hinges. If you can find a great plain slot machine hinge cutting tool, I highly recommend them. They are awesome. They show up on eBay once in a while. Unfortunately, you know, like everything great planes, they've been discontinued. And all you got to do to use it, line the two blades up right where you want the hole. Just like that. There's a nice little slot cut in there now. The other way you can do it is with an X-Acto knife, and you're basically just going to make several cuts and remove enough material to fit the hinge in there. It's a pain in the rear to do, but it works. Another little thing that I like to do to help the glue wick its way into the hole and hold the hinge in place is to take a 1 16th inch drill bit and drill in the center of the slot. Just like that. It's not a very big hole, doesn't have to be, but it'll help the CA glue wick its way all the way down in. Also, I like to mark the center of my hinges if they're not already marked. That way I know that when I insert it, I'm only going halfway. Now it's time to install the horizontal stabilizer. 
this is definitely not a step to rush through. This is one we got to slow down, make sure we get it right, because if you don't, it's going to be really hard to fix later on. A stabilizer has to be oriented correctly on all three axes. So it has to be perfectly horizontal, of course. Then, I don't know what to call it, I'm going to say the yaw axis, it has to be right on. And then, it, most importantly, is its incidence. And according to the plans, it needs to be one degree negative, which is leading edge down. The horizontal stab incidence provides pitch stability by way of an aerodynamic downforce on the tail, which is, of course, balanced out by weight in the nose of the airplane. In straight and level, unaccelerated flight, these two forces are going to be in equilibrium. Uh, if there's an upset, say you point the nose down a little bit, airspeed will increase, which will increase down pressure on, uh, on the tail, and bring the nose back up. And of course, vice versa, if there's a nose high upset. To make sure that incidence angle is set right, you need to get yourself an incidence meter. This one's made by eFlight. It's called the Angle Pro 2. It's digital. Works really easy. You can even take the, the, the gauge off and you can you put it on the airplane on, uh, in this case I'm using the wing saddle because that's parallel to the center line. You turn it on and it'll now assume that is zero. And you put it on just like so. And then you can read it right off the gauge there. Or about, about one degree. Once you're happy with the stab's incidence, then you can move on to the other two axes. To get the stab oriented right on its yaw axis, uh, I took a string, made a mark on one, uh, one end of it, and then taped it to the tip of the stab, went up, wrapped it around a pin up front that's on the aircraft center line, then brought it back to the exact same spot over here on the, on the other tip, made a mark. Then I could take those two marks on the strings, put them next to each other, you can kind of stretch the string out, you find the middle, mark the middle, tape the other end of that string over here, and now I know as long as that mark is on this pin up front here that the stabilizer is now perfectly perpendicular to that center line. To make sure that the stabilizer is perfectly horizontal, I can do the exact same technique with another string that simply goes underneath here. And then after checking everything about a dozen times over, past that point of no return and start tack gluing things in place. Now that it's tack glued in place, I can move on to epoxying it in place. And I'm going to leave these strings where they are for now. Uh, that way if something shifts, I'll be able to tell. All the tail feathers glued in place. Now I've got to show you how all the control linkages are going to work. The rudder is real simple. Basic pull-pull cable. The elevator starts as a pull-pull cable up in the front, which goes to a bell crank that you can see back here in the tail. And then on the back side of that bell crank, there's a push rod that goes up to the top to connect to the elevator control horn. That's going to do it for this video. I'm getting kind of curious as to how heavy the airplane is so far, so when I'm done here, I'm going to go put it on the scales. If you want to know the results to that weigh-in, I'll put it up on Facebook. There'll be a link in the description to make it easy to find the page. Also, I'll have a link for the uh, Angle Pro 2 uh, incidence meter here. This is a really handy tool to have. And if you think this is something you need, uh, please do use those links. Uh, those affiliate links really help me out. They help me make these videos for you. In the meantime, you can help out by feeding the YouTube algorithm with a like or a comment. If you want to see more videos like this, that's what the subscribe button's for. And the bell icon will let you know when the next video's ready. But anyway, until next time, remember, it's not worth flying if you didn't build it yourself.